Good morning. My name is Winnie Pianyema. I'm the director of the UNDP gender team. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to be with you, the Asia and Pacific Gender Equality Community of Practice. UNDP is committed to building a global, dynamic, and highly professional gender equality community of practice. And I hope this workshop will help all of you to revitalize your Asia-Pacific community under the leadership of our new regional practice leader, Kim Henderson, and of course, Nicholas Rossellini, the director of the Asia and Pacific Regional Center. This is a timely workshop to put our work on gender equality into the broader and changing development context and to anchor gender, e gender mainstreaming firmly in our changing organization. I would like to comment on two corporate priorities. One, the ongoing agenda for change, and two, UNDP's relationship with UN women. Why do we have the agenda for change? The development context has changed following the global economic and financial crisis leaving many developing countries more vulnerable and in search of new ways to achieve sustainable economic growth and human development. In this context, there is greater and more urgent need to address the nexus between growth, poverty reduction, governance, gender equality, environment and climate change. To respond to this context, and deliver transformational impact, UNDP has to achieve greater integration across these issues and be ahead of emerging global trends. Related to the changing global context, development context, is the financing landscape, which has also been evolving. There's a wider variety of funding mechanisms and in the future, we can expect a mix of traditional ODA, knowledge brokering, thematic funds, and philanthropic sources. Climate financing, which is emerging, will in the near future outstrip traditional ODA. In this context of a changing financing landscape, financing partners have increased their demands on UNDP to demonstrate visible and consistent impact at country level. They want to see value for money. So all these issues have important implications on our work to promote gender equality and women's empowerment across all the strategic priorities. The change plan creates the organizational space for demonstrating the centrality and value addition of gender equality in terms of enhancing organizational effectiveness. It is an opportunity for a quantum leap in gender mainstreaming, taking it beyond institutional measures into the zone of results and impacts. How can we achieve this? First, we need to understand what the new priorities proposed of the, over the next three years are. Gender analysis should be an integral part of UNDP's new strategic narrative of sustainable human development and the three aspects of this concept, which are inclusion and equity, resilience, and sustainability. This is the time to reflect on the key issues for your region within the new strategic priorities. How will you address them? How will you measure your success? Secondly, we need to develop a more rigorous analysis of our contribution to development results. The gender community should be able to demonstrate the achievement of specific gender equality results in the new identified priority areas. We should increase quality of our reporting 
and pay attention to the new strategic planning system that will be put in place before the end of the year. I'm pleased to inform you that the recent midterm review of the UNDP gender equality strategy found that UNDP has a robust gender equality accountability framework that can promote leadership and incentives to deliver results. I know that the Asia and Pacific region has a very well advanced gender steering committee, but more can be done to build on this and entrench it in the regional and national level operations. Thirdly, we should develop a capable and highly specialized gender expertise across the organization. The gender equality strategy recommends setting up gender focal teams led by senior managers at the country office level. I strongly urge you to champion the establishment of these multidisciplinary gender focal teams. Without these, we cannot achieve the transformational change that we seek. I recommend that you take time to read through the key relevant documents on the agenda for change and familiarize yourself with this important corporate process. Find out how you can participate and engage in the process. Be part of shaping this organization. Let me now turn to our relationship with UN Women. As our administrator, Helen Clark, has said many times, the creation of UN Women has not changed in any way UNDP's gender equality mandate. Not at all. On the contrary, during this time of financial constraints and in view of the establishment of UN Women, UNDP will need to demonstrate more clearly to donors and partners how it is delivering concrete gender equality results in its priority areas. Moreover, through its accountability mandate, UN Women is working to hold the entire UN system, including UNDP, to higher standards of gender equality. So, we have to step up and not to step down our efforts to promote gender equality and women's empowerment. As long-standing partners, UNDP and UN Women will continue to work closely together in key areas, guided by clear corporate guidelines that are being developed currently. At the country level, it's very important that you discuss with UN Women how to strengthen cooperation and ensure coordination where our strategic priorities overlap. In some areas, UN Women will lead, and in others, UNDP will lead. There will also be areas where we will co-lead. Corporate guidelines will facilitate, but they will not replace country-level discussions and agreements. The lessons we have learned are that this relationship, strategic relationship, has worked most effectively where there is a vigorous culture of policy dialogue, an appreciation of flexibility in response to dynamic developments and particularly post-crisis situations, drawing on whatever resources are available, which may vary considerably from country to country, and an overall commitment to context-driven prioritization. I have a profound conviction that these exist in most of our country offices. There are new and emerging tools for measuring collective impact, impact created by various partners. Look out for them. We can apply for the we can apply these tools to strengthen partnership with UN women and with other entities. With all of us working together, with our national partners, UN women, other UN agencies, across sectors, across regions and countries, 
we can all do more to support real change for women in the developing countries. I hope these days you will spend together will help to build a lasting community for mutual support and exchange and we will continue to work together towards this common goal. I wish you a successful workshop. Thank you.